The gateway to the digital world is the AD converter. The main point is to understand the principle of this AD converter. AD and DA converters are always hardware components in which a series of analog and digital signaling processes take place. From the top to the bottom you see now the sequence of signal processes to convert an analog signal into a digital signal. In the top series a small segment from an analog LF signal can be seen. Below it you see the periodical time pulses which control the measurement samples. The features of the sample and hold process can be seen in the third row. The measured value is stored until the next measurement is sampled. The sampled and stored values are compared with the periodic linear increasing sawtooth. If the instantaneous sawtooth value is smaller than the sample, there is a high level at the output of the comparator. Otherwise, there is a low level. This signal can be seen in the fifth row. It can be clearly seen that the pulse length increases linearly in accordance with the increasing height of the step curve. The information on the size of the instantaneous measurement lies in the pulse length at the output of the comparator. This signal opens and closes a gate. At the input of the gate there is a periodic needle pulse sequence with 32 times the frequency of the above sampling process. Depending on the pulse length, more or fewer pulses pass through the gate and, to be precise, between the minimum 0 and the maximum 32. The number of pulses is always discrete. That means 16 or 17, but never 16.23. Now the information on the instantaneous measurement is no longer present in analog continuous form but in discrete form. This is a process of quantization. The coding as a string of dual numbers is formed by a binary counter which cannot be seen here. Therefore this simulation is a 5-bit AD converter because 32 different numbers can be encoded using equivalent 5-bit combinations. At the inputs of a DA converter there is a dual number which is converted internally into a discrete analog value. The output signal of a DA converter is thus a step-like signal. In the case of a 5-bit DA converter, 32 different steps are possible. Five rectangular signals form a binary pattern generator. From the top to the bottom the frequency doubles in each case. Finally, this produces a linear rise in step curve or a periodic sawtooth. On the upper left you see the instantaneous binary pattern. On the lower left you see the instantaneous analog output signal. The DA converter is designed purely according to a formula in which every bit is multiplied by 1, 2, 4, 8 or 16, depending on its weight. The jump height at the edges of the steps is always an integer multiple of the minimum value defined by the quantization process.
A digitalized audio signal is read from a disc and shown on a screen. It appears to be a continuous analog signal. If, however, by using the lens function, a tiny segment is zoomed out, individual measuring points can be seen, which are joined by straight lines. These measurement points can be brought out more clearly if so desired. Thus, each point can be represented additionally by a small cross or triangle. The representation of the points as vertical bars is very graphic. The height of a bar is equivalent to a measurement. We should emphasize once again. A digital signal consists pictorially in the time domain of a discrete equidistant sequence of measurements which reproduce the curve of the original continuous analog signal, more or less accurately. As a result of quantization, the measurements are value discrete. That means only a finite number of different graduated measurements can occur. Digital signals are time and value discrete in contrast to the time and value continuous analog signals. As to be seen here in this simulation, a digital signal is nothing but a string of numbers. In this simulation, both the block lengths n and the sampling frequency are set at 32. A periodic sawtooth of 1 Hz was selected as a signal, as we are familiar with its spectrum from Chapter 2. On the left, the signal is to be seen in the time domain, and on the right, in the frequency domain. The length of the signal delta t is the same as the period length. The individual values can be represented as columns and the time discrete nature of digital signals is thus clearer. In addition, all the changes or possible defects compared with analog signal processing can be recognized more easily. The yardstick for this investigation is provided by the three fundamental phenomena to which we have so far been introduced. Fourier principle, FP, uncertainty principle, UP, and the symmetry principle, SP. In the time domain, two different times can be seen. The signal length, delta T, is one second. The time interval between two measurements is one thirty-second of a second. As a result of the uncertainty principle UP, these two times must influence the frequency spectrum. The signal length of delta T, which is one second, results in the frequency uncertainty of at least one hertz related to the uncertainty principle. This explains why the lines or frequencies of the amplitude spectrum have a spacing of 1 Hz. The computer does not know that the signal is actually periodic. The number of the visible positive frequencies in the spectrum is always exactly half the sampling rate n, in this case 32. Remember that other n half information is present in the negative frequency range. Here too, the signal length is one second and the sampling frequency is 32 hertz with a block length of 32. However, the frequency of the sawtooth is 1.3 Hz and as a result 
does not fit into the time grid of the signal segment. The amplitude spectrum has a completely irregular curve and is not identical to that of a periodic sawtooth. On the other hand, it is a discrete line spectrum and must therefore belong to a periodic signal. This illustration reveals how the chaos in the frequency domain arises. In digital signal processing, the signal segment to be analyzed is always regarded as periodic. The length of the signal segment is always equal to the digital period length. Precisely for this reason, the spectrum of digital signals is always a line spectrum and the spacing of the frequencies is exactly the inverse value of the digital period length. Please note, the period length of digital signals is always equal to the length of the whole signal segment which is being analyzed and processed. An important phenomenon is now explained in detail. The periodic spectra of digital signals. Not only in the time domain must every digitalized signal be regarded as periodic. The periodic length T digital is simply the length of the temporarily stored signal. The signal is also periodic in the frequency domain. Here once again the reasons. Real periodic signals always have a line spectrum. The spacing between the lines is constant. As a result of the symmetry principle SP, the reverse must also be true. Lines at equal intervals in the time domain necessarily imply periodicity in the frequency domain. As all digital signals consist of such lines as a result of sampling, they must have periodic spectra. These periodic spectra consist of lines or discrete values, which again explains the periodicity in the time domain. Thus, Lines at equal intervals in the one domain result in periodicity in the other domain. If both domains consist of lines at equal intervals, from the point of view of the computer, both domains must be regarded as periodic. In this illustration, a big error is built in. At the top, you see the infinite wide spectrum of a sawtooth. At the bottom, there is a periodic spectrum of the digitalized sawtooth. It can be seen that the spectra nearby are overlapping each other. For physical reasons, we have no possibility to avoid errors. The only possible consequence is Digital signal processing needs real signals, which are bandwidth limited. This experiment let the cat out of the bag. This clearly shows what relationship there must be between the sampling frequency and the highest frequency of the analog signal so that the frequency bands of the digital signal just avoid overlapping. This relationship is fundamental for the whole of digital signal processing DSP and thus represents the fourth principle of this book. The sampling principle called sampling theorem in related literature means the sampling frequency must be at least twice as big as the highest frequency occurring in the analog signal. 
The reasons for this can be clearly seen here. As the spectrum of the analog signal is convoluted in the inverse and regular position, the lower and upper sideband at each frequency line of the sampling signal, the frequency lines of the sampling signal must be at least twice as wide apart as the spectrum of the analog system is wide. 